Hi everyone, and welcome to my channel. This is the second part of the video series, which shows how to make, a complete racing game like OutRun from scratch, step by step. It's an old school pseudo 3D racing game, where your goal is to drive a car, as fast as possible through heavy traffic. To code this game I used JavaScript, with the phaser framework. In the second part, we are going to add a player car, and make the road to properly loop back. So keep watching. This is what we have developed so far. After initializing a new phaser game, and creating the main loop, we built a straight road using a number of segments. Then we implemented a 3D perspective projection, to simulate the appearance of 3D space. This technique is known as pseudo 3D. Finally, we rendered the entire road including grass along it, rumble strips and lanes. To mark the start and finish of the road, we painted these segments with different colors. If you missed the first part, I strongly recommend you to watch it, before going to the next part. The links are in description below. Let's start the second part with creating a new player class. Within the class constructor, we declare a reference to the main scene, the world coordinates of the player, the maximum speed, and the current speed. The maximum speed prevents the player car, from crossing more than one segment per frame, assuming the game is refreshed at 60 frames per second. The restart function sets the initial player position, and its speed. We set the speed equal to the maximum speed, so that the car can move forward, until we add driving controls. The update function updates the player position. Currently it only moves forward in Z direction. The distance traveled in one frame, is the speed multiplied by the elapsed time. By using the elapsed time from the last frame, we prevent the game from lagging. For instance, this could happen if the frame rate reduces for some reason. To use the player class, we need to include it in the index file, and then create its object instance in the main scene. Now we can restart the player, and then update it in every frame, passing the elapsed time since the last frame in seconds. Because the delta time parameter is in milliseconds, it must be divided by 1000. Also, we don't want the elapsed time to be more than one second. And when we run the game, it looks like nothing happens yet. That's because the camera doesn't follow the player. Let's fix this, so that the camera Z follows the player Z, at the desired distance. Similarly, we can set the camera X to follow the player X. But, since the player X is normalized between minus 1 and 1, the camera X must be multiplied by the road width. Here we need the references to the player, and circuit objects. Let's run it. Oh yes, we take a road trip, with a wonderful psychedelic effect. Let's enjoy it. Okay, sorry, let's fix this. The problem is because the segments are rendered from front to back, and some further segments with a lower Y coordinate, are drawn over the front segments. To disable rendering these segments, we define a clipping bottom line, to render only segments above it. Now for each segment, we can take its Y coordinate, and check if it is lower than the clipping bottom line. Only in that case, we draw this segment, and move the clipping bottom line up on a new Y position. Let's check it. Well, there is no more psychedelic effect. Okay okay, thanks. Now let's add the player sprite. Here is a prototype of our Ferrari racing car. At first we need to load its image. Then we create an array, to store all sprites we will use in the future. So let's add the player sprite, and make it invisible, because we don't want to show it yet. To easier point to the player position in the sprite array, we can declare a global constant. Next. In the main loop, let's call a function to initialize the player. Now, switch to the player class. To use the player sprite inside the class, we need a reference to it. We also define the default width of the player, in the world space. This parameter will be used later for collision detection. Next, we declare all coordinates of the player in the screen space. Finally, let's add the init function, to set the player size on the screen, and its position at the center bottom of the screen. So we have the player sprite, but to display it, we need to create a rendering texture inside the circuit class. This texture will be used at the end of the render function, to draw any visible sprite object on it. So at first, we clear the texture. Then we simply draw the player sprite on it, using player screen coordinates. Let's check it. Oh yes, we are driving our Ferrari now. Oh no! It seems like the road doesn't loop back. 
That means, before projecting a segment, we need to calculate the camera offset Z, when the road loops back. So, if the index of the current segment, is lower than the index of the base segment, then the offset Z is equal to the road length. Otherwise it is zero. We can now project a segment, with the camera position Z corrected for the offset Z. Before testing, let's decrease the number of segments, so we can quickly check if the road correctly loops back. Hmm. It's still not good. Let's take a look at the player update function. Well, since the Z coordinate of the player increases all the time, it will become greater than the road length at the endpoint. In that case, we have to decrease the current player Z by the length of the road. To get the road length, we need a reference to the circuit object. Oh yes, it works. But there is still an irritating flickering effect, when the road loops back. That's because the camera follows the player's car behind it, so the Z coordinate of the camera becomes negative, when the road loops back. In that case, we need to make the camera Z positive, by increasing it for the road length. Let's see. Yes. Yes, it looks good now. Oh yeah, we finally did it. So that's all for the second part. We added the player and fixed the code, so the road correctly loops back now. In the next part, we are going to upgrade the settings class, so that we can change some parameters during the gameplay. For instance, we will be able to change the camera height, the camera depth, the road width, and the number of lanes. Then we will add a city in the background, and make a complete control system, so we can drive our Ferrari with the cursor keys. In the meantime, don't forget to leave a comment below, and like this video if you found it interesting. And please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Bye now.